This video we're going to prove a few more derivable rules using pretty much anything we've done before. So in this video we can use modus tollens, we can use hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, or any of the De Morgan's laws that we did the last video. So we can use the fact in the previous video that not P or Q proves and is proved by not P and not Q to do any of the ones that we've done above. And as we go through the sequence, if we do two, we can use one. If we use three, we can use two and one. If we do four, we can use three, two, and one, and so on. So let's try some of these. And let's turn the lines on so everything is neat. Okay, not P or not Q, we're proving not P and Q. So because there's a negation before this P and Q, what I want to do is I want to assume that P and Q is true. This is a hypothesis for contradiction, for RAA. I want to get a contradiction here, and our result in the end is hopefully going to be that it is negated. So that is the goal for our first assumption. Okay, now I have P and Q, so just to speed some things up, I'm going to take P and Q out from using and elimination. So I'll use and elimination on lines two to get three and four, which is P and Q. Okay, now what do I need to do at this point? Well, it would be nice if using one, not P or not Q, we can do or elimination. If we can do or elimination on this, then we can show that each one gets a contradiction, we're in a good spot. So in line five, I want to assume not P as a new hypothesis, and this is for or elimination. And I want to show that I get a contradiction with this, and when I do the same thing for not Q, I also want to get a contradiction. So in line six, I'm going to reiterate P from line three, because we know that's true based on our assumption. Now we have not P and P, which means in line seven, we can introduce a contradiction. So five, six, and this is contradiction introduction. Okay, in lines eight, nine, and 10, we're going to do something very similar, uh, but this time we'll work with not Q. So we're going to assume not Q for or elimination. That's in line one, we have not P or not Q, so we're seeing what happens if we assume either one of these. So I'm just gonna move it over a tiny bit so that way we know that's not a continuous subproof. I'm gonna reiterate Q from line four, that's four reiteration, and that gives us a uh, contradiction. Since we have not Q and we have Q, so from eight and nine, this is contradiction introduction. Okay, well, because we have not P going to a contradiction and not Q going to a contradiction, we can get a contradiction out using or elimination. So from one, where we have our first or statement, we have two subproofs from five to seven, and eight to 10 with or elimination, and that gives us a contradiction. At this point in line 12 down here, we have that if we assume P and Q, we get a contradiction. Therefore, we know that P and Q has to be false. So we can take not P and Q as our sequence, and this is now the end of the proof. So we have shown that if we have not P or not Q, it's the same thing, or we get not P and Q. We have a proof of that. And I should justify it at the very end. So this is from 2 to 11, and that is through RAA. That is our proof by contradiction. So that is going in one direction. Let's look at the other direction. Not P and Q gives us not P or not Q. Now this one is a bit of a toughie, but I think we can do this through some ingenuity. Okay, I need to get not P or not Q, but I can't really do anything with the hypothesis because this is a negated statement. The most I'm going to be able to do with this hypothesis is using the fact that we have not P and Q, finding at some point some P and Q, and using it as a contradiction. Like that's what I'm gonna to have to do. So what I want to do then is in line two, I want to assume not not P or not Q for contradiction. 
fact, I want to actually move this over a little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is we're going to use this fact, we're going to find a contradiction, and that means we're going to get not 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 p or not q and use double negation on that. So maybe not intuitive right away why we use this, but based on this reasoning on the right, the fact that I can only use our hypothesis for a contradiction, that's what we're going to have to end up doing at some point. So this is probably the best way of doing this, is just let's assume that our consequent is false and see what happens. Okay, so I don't know how long this is going to be, but well, let's see. Okay, not not P or not Q. Well, again, I can't really do anything with this. So if I can't do anything with this, well, then I guess if I need to get not P, I should just assume P. There's a good thing. Let's assume P for another proof by contradiction. Let's let's see what happens. Okay, so we have P. Uh, hmm. I still can't do anything. I need to get P and Q. I need to get P and Q, right? So let's let's just set up another one of these. I think I need to move over a little bit. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be. Let's do this one. Okay, I have P. That's great. Uh, I think what I also need now is I need Q. Okay, let's let's assume Q. Let's just see what happens here. This is a lot of assumptions. We're kind of pulling things out. But hey, why not? Let's let's see what happens. Okay. So we have not P and Q is our, our original assumption. Uh, we've assumed not not P or not Q. We've assumed P and we've assumed Q. So at this point, in line five, well at least we can get P and Q together finally. So from three and four, we can use and introduction. I could copy P back into the subproof. In fact, maybe if we're being like totally uh, rigorous with everything, I should reiterate it. So from three, I'm reiterating P, and then I'm doing P and Q in line six by taking four and five and doing and introduction. Okay, uh, this subproof will have to continue a bit because now at this point, I need to reintroduce not P and Q from our assumption. That was our initial assumption. Okay, at this point, we have P and Q, we have not P and Q, so we get a contradiction, which means that we can then pull not Q out. Okay, so if we assume P, we end up with not Q. Okay, this seems promising so far. I wonder what else there is to do with this. Well, let's think about this for a moment. We now have not Q. If we can get not P or not Q, ah, here we go. We can use or introduction to get ourselves not P and not Q. In fact, let me just label these lines, eight and nine. So not P or not Q. Uh, so eight, I should say eight was lines four to seven. That was RAA and not P or not Q from eight. We're doing or introduction. And we think, what is the benefit of doing this? Well, remember number two, our assumption was that we had not, not P or not Q. Okay, so from two, we're reiterating that, and now we get a contradiction, because we have not P or not Q, and we have not not P or not Q. So in line 11, we can now exit the subproof and get ourselves not P, and that is because from 3 to 10, we've used our proof by contradiction to get ourselves not P. Okay, so this is, this is actually working out fairly well. Okay, now that we have not P, in line 12, we can do or introduction as well. So from line 11, we do or introduction to get not P or not Q. And this is, this is great too, because we have that same contradiction happening again. We have not not P or not Q. We have not P or not Q. That gives us a contradiction. So that means that on line 13, we know we have not, not, not P or not Q. 
Uh, and this is from, uh, what is this? This is from 2 to 11 RAA. Because we assumed not not P or not Q. We found that we get not P or not Q and not not P or not Q. So we get a contradiction with itself, which means that our initial assumption cannot be true. So we have not 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 P or not Q. And then in 14, uh, we can use double negation to get not P or not Q. And here is the full proof of this. So this one is a lot more challenging than the other ones, I believe, because we have these three assumptions that don't really feel like they're doing anything. It feels like we're just assuming things for the sake of forcing something to happen. Like we're getting stuck and we're saying, okay, well, let's just assume P, let's assume Q. And there was sort of this magical step in two where it's like, why would you do this? But if we take this step by step and we just trust ourselves and we play around with things, uh, eventually it does work out. So I, I, I think this proof is, is really interesting. It's, it's incredible that it works. Uh, and yeah, if it took you a couple times or if you had this as a homework assignment and that's why you're watching this video, which I'll be honest, that's why some of you watch it. It's just for solutions. But you can see that there's a path that is not straightforward here. Okay, well, luckily, the next two are a little bit more straightforward. So we have P arrow Q, then we want to prove not Q arrow not P from that. Well, this one we'll do really quick. I won't even turn the lines on for this. Uh, I'm going to assume not Q for the sake of a conditional proof. So this is a hypothesis, and this is for CP. Because I have not Q arrow not P, so I need to assume not Q and say, okay, if I have not Q, then I should get not P. Uh, so in three, I'm going to reiterate P or Q from line one. And then in four, I'm going to use modus tollens. So remember, modus tollens said that if we have not P and not Q, then our result is not P. That's what we proved in the last video for derivable rules. So because I have not Q and I have P arrow Q, I get not P, so this was 2, 3, and this is modus tollens. Okay, uh, so then in line 5, I have not Q, arrow not P, and that was from lines 2 to 4, and that was a conditional proof. So you might need to do the rules to show them all out if your assignment hasn't given you modus tollens yet, but then you can just go back to the video, and there will be a few lines that you put in between here that will get you this result. So we've already proved that if we have not Q and P or OQ, we get not P. So we're just taking a shortcut here. We're just not putting in uh, whatever lines, like we call 3.1, 3.2, all the way down to like 3.6 or whatever we need. Uh, we're just not including those in there. Okay, that's how we can prove contraposition. Last one, if we have P or OQ, then we have not P or Q. Now, there's a few ways of doing this, but... I use modus told in the last one. I, I want to use the rules that we proved. So when I take a look at not P or Q, I notice something from De Morgan's. I notice that this is the same thing as not P and not Q, because if I use De Morgan's on this, I get not P or not not Q, and then not not Q just becomes Q. So I, I know from De Morgan's that these are the same. So I'm going to use this fact in my proof. So this is what I'm going to try to get. Instead of trying to get not P or Q, I'm going to try to get not P and not Q. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have P arrow Q. So as long as I get P, I can get Q. Which... If I think about this, this Q, and I think about this not Q in my result, the, the contradiction seems very likely. So anyway, uh, let's go through the proof here. In one, I have P arrow Q. What I'm going to do for the sake of contradiction is I'm going to assume P and not Q. So when I get a contradiction, I'll get not P and not Q, and then I'll use De Morgan's to get our final result. Okay, so this is a hypothesis. I want this for RAA to find a contradiction. Okay, who knows how long this has to be? Let's say this is good enough. 
Okay, uh, in line three, I'm going to reiterate P arrow Q from one, so that way we can use it. Uh, in lines four and five, I'm going to use and elimination on two, so I can split these up into their components. So now we have P, we have not Q. Okay, in line six, I'm going to then use modus ponens on three and four to get Q. So we have P arrow Q, we have P, therefore we get Q. At this point, we have Q and not Q, so this will give us our contradiction. I'm going to shorten up this line a little bit because I really didn't need all that space. So in line seven, which I'll just use in yellow again, I have a contradiction, so I'm gonna get not P and not Q. So that's from two to six, I've done RAA. Okay, now we can use our sequence. So in eight, not P and not Q is going to become not P or not not Q by De Morgan's law that we've just proven earlier. So this is convenient. We've saved ourselves a lot of steps in this. Hmm. Okay, so in some of your systems, you'll be able to see not not Q and you can just claim Q from that and end it. Uh, but that's not something that we have in this. So uh, what do we have to do here? We have to do or elimination. So to do or elimination, in line nine, I'm going to assume not P. So this is a hypothesis for or elimination. Uh, if I get not P, I can use uh, or introduction to get not P or Q. So from nine, that's or introduction. And let me just put the little lines in here so we know it's a subproof. Okay, now we have to do a subproof for not not Q. So if we assume not not Q, another hypothesis for or introduction, then what we can do is we can use double negation on line 11 to get Q, and then we can use or introduction to get not P or Q in line 13. So from line 12, we use or introduction. Now, if we assume not P, we get not P or not Q. If we assume not not Q, we get not P or Q. Therefore, because both of those end up with not P or Q in line 14, we can pull not P or Q out. Uh, this started from eight. There is a subproof from nine to 10 and a subproof from 11 to 13, and that was or elimination, and that is the end of our proof. So we've shown that if we have P or Q, we get not P or Q. And the only fancy thing we really used here was De Morgan's Law. If we did not have De Morgan's Law, you would just simply have to prove, and I say simply jokingly, <laughs> that uh, not P and not Q gives you not P or not not Q, or alternatively not P or Q. That's basically what you'd have to prove here. But we can take the shortcut because we've already done a proof of De Morgan's Law. So yeah. That was four more rules that you can use whenever you want. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave them in the comments below, and I will answer you when I can.